Good morning. This is John Blake. I'm the director of the Miami University Center for Community Engagement here in Over the Rhine. And as part of our programming for the 20th anniversary of our center here at 1300 Vine Street, we invited alumni of the residency program, as well as Bonnie Neumeyer, who's our community liaison, to talk with us about their experiences uh, in Over the Rhine. And we've done this program since 2006, and its key points are that it's immersive and that it's interdisciplinary. And we have found that it has a remarkable impact on the students who do the program, and it takes them many, many places. So with that, um, I'd like everybody in the, in the crew today to introduce themselves, starting with Bonnie, who's our, uh, our community liaison is a simple way of putting it, but has done so much to generate uh, the work around this program to foster the student work and also helping our founder, Tom Dutton, to create this program back in 2006. So with that, here's Bonnie. Good morning. I'm glad to be here with the past alums of the program. And I'm a resident of Over the Rhine and a longtime uh, neighborhood activist. And my role in this program has been to uh, responsible for their orientation when they come to the community. I've helped teach a co-teach a class and also facilitated a writing circle where uh, giving students a chance to reflect on their experience in the neighborhood. So it's really been a privilege. When I think over the years that this program has been operating, I see so many different faces. Because each year the cohort is different, even though it goes through, uh, you know, different challenges and things like that. So it's just been a real gift to our community to get the talent and the energy of the students uh, walking with us in our struggles here at Over the Rhine. So I'm excited to hear the students um, this morning just to share their reflection with you all about how what this meant to them. Good morning, everyone. My name is Joelle Newman. I am originally from Springfield, Illinois, but I um, came to Miami in 2014 and I participated in the residency program in fall of 2017. I was a psychology and social justice studies double major at, during my time at Miami. And when I was in the residency program, I interned at Peasley Neighborhood Center, which is where I am currently employed. Good morning, my name is Amy Silver. I uh, was in the residency program back in 2007. And I was a social work student at Miami University and I also uh, studied women's studies. And when I came down um, to do the program, I interned at Over the Rhine Community Housing, and I have been living and working in the neighborhood since 2007. Essentially, I didn't leave, um, and I, I work at Over the Rhine Community Housing still as a social worker. Good morning. My name is Kaylee Hubie. I was part of the cohort in 2016. Um, I came in from a political science and social justice studies background, and my intern placement was with the Intercommunity Justice and Peace Center. Um, which is also now where I work, um, been there for the past three and a half years. So um, hopefully this will be conversational. Uh, we wanted to hit on the points of it being, you know, like why is the residency program immersive, right? Because these are courses, I mean, you take courses in Oxford, come down here. So um, what's the difference, say, between your experience in the neighborhood as a residency program member and perhaps your experience in Oxford mm -hmm. and, or with uh, higher education in general? I can start. Um, yeah. I think this residency program, I know this residency program and the classes and the whole experience was the most important thing in my college career. It was a full body experience, so like truly immersive. You know, you your heart's involved, your mind's involved, your physical body's involved a lot of times. Um, it's like a 24 hour experience while you're down here. So it's, um, it's completely immersive. You know, when you're up at Miami, you can kind of go to class, go back to your dorm or your house. It's very, um, what you want it to be, you know, it's as little or as much as you want it to be. But when you're in over the Rhine for the residency program, at least my experience, it's, it's just a full body experience. It's the most meaningful Oh man, just, yeah, there's nothing really, there's nothing else like it for me. Yeah, I would agree. And I feel like Haley may 
speak to this as well, but especially as a social justice studies major, mm. um, learning about the theories and things regarding social justice, um, and you learn about a lot of like large scale movements, um, but to come into a place and learn about like grassroots movements and to meet people who are doing social justice work in every part of their lives, mm. um, and then to learn from them, but then also to like be able to walk alongside them for like 16 weeks really makes a difference. And I feel like um, kind of separates a lot of the book knowledge or the academic knowledge that you're learning in classrooms in Oxford, um, but actually really puts it into like a real world perspective for you. Mm -hmm. Like it helps you realize, um, yeah, just the real life impact that this has on everyday people. And um, not just, it's not just made up of theories, it's not just made up of papers, um, but it's made up of people doing hard work every day in their mm -hmm. neighborhoods. And so I feel like that really like, was a difference for me and something that I was searching for. Um, and so I was really excited to find this program and like to have that opportunity um, to put what I was learning into practice along with people who had been doing work for decades. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I would definitely agree that, especially with social justice classes, so much of that is very academic and very theoretical. And when you do hear like personal accounts, it's often like you heard like one person's telling of what happened during this movement and here you're you're living it, you're seeing all these community members, you're learning about it in the classroom, but then you're also seeing the impact like where you're living and in everything that you're doing outside of your classes and outside of your placements. Mm -hmm. And it's just like you said, like it's just so much more, it's much more real and tangible than just reading a study or a paper. And I even feel like one thing with the immersive part is like it checks your assumptions yeah. um, because I feel like, you know, when you're learning in academic spaces or you're learning amongst people who are like all your same age or like come from mm -hmm. similar experiences. Like you can a lot of times have assumptions about either the people or the groups of folks that you're learning about. Um, but when you like come and you like literally see these people every day, like they're your neighbors, you're working with them, you're volunteering with them. It just, you check your own personal assumptions, which I feel like, especially as a college student, is like mm -hmm. necessary. Cause mm -hmm. sometimes you can feel like you know everything. Um, and so I appreciate this program for, for that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well said, yeah. <laughs> When you're talking about these immersive experiences, I think part of it is, as you pointed out, like the the moments between classes, mm -hmm. right? So when you're on campus, you're with everybody. Your mm -hmm. Can you think of um, some specific instances of stuff that I would say was like not on the syllabus, yeah, or right, unscripted mm -hmm. that happened? Because I, I, um, as as one who is working on the curriculum and all that, you tend to see things and. Oh, we're going to set this up, then we're going to set that up, and then these things will overlap sometimes quite a bit, sometimes a little bit to create mm -hmm. realms where people can make mm -hmm. connections, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of the connection that happens down here, um, quite frankly, cannot be scripted. So if there's instances that you can think of where, yeah. or where did it hit you that it was like, oh wow, I'm learning stuff that's not, <laughs> I, not in the books. I think for me and probably all of us, the stoop was a. a a classroom in and of itself. So sitting on your stoop outside of your front door. Um, and I can remember Terrence, a little boy who lived on Republic Street at the time, um, was always around and he always ate our popsicles. Like we were always out, it was so hot. We didn't have air conditioning at that point in 2007 in our building. And gosh, that was a really hot summer. And so we were always out on the stoop eating popsicles and Terrence was always around. Um, and so we spent a lot of time with him and not only that time with him right there, but also when we went back inside and talked amongst, you know, our, ourselves about what it was like, you know, like this is this kid's life. He's, he doesn't care that we're students. He doesn't care that we're here learning. Like he's living his life. Um, and so he was teaching us a lot, you know, like his lived experience. Um, this was his world and we were just in it. Um, so yeah, I think time on the stoop with neighbors, especially kids, because kids give it to you real and straight, and they're wonderful in that way, and really good teachers. Um, That's yeah. a lot of what I get um, yeah. with the parking lot. Yeah, right. The parking we're in a building yeah. called Buddy's Place that has yeah. 20 units of housing yeah. around us, and they really do surround us. So mm -hmm. when I come in in the morning, you know, to be greeted and, mm -hmm. and to be in a rhythm that's not my rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, to enter into that. and. Yeah, I, I, from my perspective, also the having to slow down, mm -hmm. which is which is hard because you get your own paces. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm frequently reminded when I come in the back door, like I need to have a conversation mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. or that you know this thing I think is important 
might not be as important as, mm -hmm. as this other thing that's happening right in front of me. Mm -hmm. A lot of students have always shared, at least with me, just walking around the neighborhood, yeah. Yeah. not accustomed for people to say hello or look you in the eye or anything like that. I guess, I don't know what it's like up on the campus. <laughs> Maybe people are on their cell phones or something like that, but a lot of the students were totally surprised about mm -hmm. the welcoming nature of our neighborhood um, to them. But, but just also just observing a lot of different things in the community by being outside of their Apartments when they're here or sitting over at Washington Park mm -hmm. you know um, a lot of them maybe it might have been the first time they ever talked with a person experiencing homelessness mm -hmm. I mean I remember residents talking about how how that felt to them and things like that or going to some of our community meetings just <laughs> maybe there's some things you can learn just by sitting in and observing a community meeting like you know so yeah, it's a lot of things outside the classroom. I just mm -hmm. think you would not get if you're up at Miami. Mm -hmm. And you can see how, um, who has a voice in our community. I mean, you know, we, we work hard at trying to have a voice here, but I think the students really witness um, how power works or it doesn't work for, for people mm -hmm. as they come here. Yeah, I think so much of it is not necessarily like one specific event but just those daily interactions where you're picking up on like the nuances of like the culture and the area and the people that are here and how people are going about their lives and like the stuff that isn't documented in like numbers and just like all the contradictions between like long-term residents and how they're interacting with the community versus like the people that are visiting to go to a bar or a restaurant that are in town for the night and like just like all those different things with the way you see people interacting with the buildings and with each other mm. and with like local businesses and like these residents and all those things are just like, they're just so nuanced and like just the little things that you pick up on mm. and like that just become part of your experience without you really like noticing it in like one specific moment mm -hmm. where you're just like, oh, wow. And what you're learning about in the classroom then informs how you're observing yeah. all of these things that look really benign and just like life happening on the street. And it's like, no, all of this means something. And all of this is something and comes from stuff, <laughs> you know? And I just feel like from the from the learning part and like all of these different nuances and like the things that you're learning, I feel like the part that like really stuck out to me was always like Bonnie's journaling mm -hmm. um, space, which I always like to lift up um, because I feel like it's so impactful for every residency student. Like I feel like you can't find a resident or a person yeah. who participated in the residency program that like doesn't bring up the journaling circles because um, you're learning about these big systems um, and Bonnie is so intentional of like you seeing yourself in all of those. So I feel like the learning that I got that I wasn't really expecting was like mm -hmm. more of a reflective like internal mm -hmm. education um, that I didn't come here for, um, <laughs> but was very <laughs> necessary. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like seeing myself and how I play in those subjects systems, how I function in those systems, um, how people who look like me, how people who don't look like me mm -hmm. um, experience them. Um, and yeah, processing all of that together with people who are going through the exact same mm -hmm. thing. Um, so yeah, that was totally unexpected learning, but something that, yeah, impacted me for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. so. Well, then all the, all the design students like, what, I've got to write more? <laughs> <laughs> There's always a little bit of resistance. Yes. I don't know. I, it's been, you know, but I think usually students by the end of the of the semester are glad that they've had that experience because part of this work is you have to reflect on what you're doing, whether you're going to keep continuing. I don't know. It's just important to reflect mm -hmm. and, and to process because mm -hmm. some of the yeah. students really are going through a big change. Mm -hmm. They yeah. haven't seen a lot of what's going on or not uh, are feeling angry sometimes about mm -hmm. what they're seeing and feeling a little powerlessness. Mm -hmm in what they're witnessing and so be able to talk about it uh, through writing mm -hmm. I just think is, is really key. Mm -hmm. And then another thing I think the, the students who come here to do their student teaching, I've heard a lot of them say when they went into Kroger's or walk in the streets and they'll see their students, but they really get a sense about what their students in the classroom, mm -hmm. their lived experience in that neighborhood and they just, they just get a lot more uh, understanding I guess of the of the of the social conditions that some of the students are experiencing and so they have always said how important it was to be in the neighborhood maybe where they're where they're teaching mm -hmm. 
I think it's very little value too. I think it's just the richest way to learn. Mm -hmm. It's that's what immersion is. I mean, it's so you're learning these very important theories and concepts and histories in the classroom, but then when you're in the world, you're seeing real life examples that hammer it all home. And then you're journaling and you're reflecting and you're processing with your peers and you're getting really vulnerable and you're you're thinking new things and you're you're thinking about your own hometown and how these concepts apply there and you're thinking about moving forward in your role and what you imagine yourself doing and how these concepts apply there and it's just it's very rich yeah well you brought up the student teachers and um you know i think it's important to note that this has become an interdisciplinary thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, when when we started coming down in the 90s, it was dominantly about design build work, which mm -hmm. is to say architectural education around reactivating spaces, both inside buildings and outside of the community, and students learning through, you know, the hammer, right? Like the hammer teaching. And and the idea that we're making connections of of objects, but uh, then also in, in some ways connections with, with people and understandings. Um, but the starting of the center really grew from the design build work, which was like coming down three days a week was just not enough. Mm -hmm. And only looking through the design lens mm -hmm. at conditions in the community and building those understandings was not enough. I, th I think, you know, you brought up Terrence mm -hmm. and I think of all the kids who used to be at our job sites yeah. you know, back in the late nineties and they'd be like, who are all these kids? This yeah. is great, but we can't have them in here with the t power tools. Right, you know? right. Um, but that grew into Tom starting the center, I think was, you know, for many reasons, but a lot of it was to build up towards a stronger commitment to community, mm -hmm. but then also dominantly a, a stronger commitment to deep student learning mm -hmm. around those conditions, mm -hmm. right? Um, so the center became something where we weren't just coming down three days a week, right? We would come down for longer. And then when we finally got a personal anecdote, when, um, I had been working in, in architecture firms uh, for, for years after teaching with Tom a little bit part time. And at a certain point, I got a phone call from Tom serendipitously when I had uh, just left a firm. And he was like, this fall we're going live. Mm -hmm. We're doing the residency program. We're having students in Over the Rhine. Over the Rhine Community Housing is gonna provide us housing for these students. We're gonna have courses at the center and you can do design build full time. And I was like, Let's do it. <laughs> and because I saw that, like, okay, now we can be really immersed. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, personally, I was like, now we can do bigger projects and it'll be crazy. Mm -hmm. We're like over at 530 East 13, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. trying to get that thing done. Um, but we grew pretty quickly. And I think even the first cohort was that way. Yeah. And Tom was like, yeah, it's not all design build, right? Like, so we're also going to have student teachers join us, mm -hmm. we're going to have social work students, mm -hmm. you know, they can do their practicum, their, mm -hmm. their field placement, mm -hmm. right? And the idea of a placement, and this is something that Bonnie is brilliant at coordinating for us, is the idea that, um, well, if you're a design student, you wind up with me or others that help teach the design build. So we're still doing those things with community partners in the community. Mm -hmm. If you're a student teacher, evidently you're in a, a, a school nearby mm -hmm. and you're doing your, your work that you have to do to become certified as a teacher. And that is a whole thing, right? Um, but if you're, and, and I, I, someday I'm gonna come up with a great category that doesn't the apply others. to all the other. <laughs> but the truth is there's like this interdisciplinary thing where the richness is brought in by students at large. And that doesn't sound much better. Um, but just the idea that it, it takes all these disciplines, yeah. right? to really get the proper yeah. filters and, and lenses on what's happening, yeah. right? So maybe at this point, um, thinking about how you worked across discipline when you were in this program, did it expand mm -hmm. in any way the, the academic style you were in or, yeah. or some instances of that? Oh man, I, I, sorry, I can jump right in. I can just think, so for me, that was one of the most unexpected yet important parts of the residency program. So I lived in the intern house on 14th Street and one of my housemates was a student teacher. And my experience of living with her and learning from her was just so impactful. I didn't even, you know, I had no idea what being a student teacher and then being a teacher would be like. Um, but watching her get up before I had to get up um, get ready, go to school, be a real teacher. You know, I wasn't a real social worker yet, but she was really 
teaching a class. She had real students in her classroom that she was responsible for who had real issues and real needs and challenges that she was carrying home and talking to us about. And it was incredibly humbling for me as her peer um, to see the level of work that she was doing, the, the important role of teachers, um, the importance of our public education system and all the ways that we can make that better and should make that better. And just, I mean, I could go on and on about what I learned from Deirdre, who was my housemate um, and a student teacher. And I, that was, again, just like sitting on the stoop. It wasn't in the syllabus. No one knew that that was something I was going to get from it, but that was a huge, huge thing for me. And, you know, I was working in a housing agency, so I was a lot of the families that were in her classrooms lived in our housing and then my um my classmates who were architecture students were working on a, a building that over the Rhine community housing owned that you, you know it's just you see all of these puzzle pieces that when you are in this vulnerable space as peers you come together and share your lived experience and oh i never thought about that before and you're tired in a different way than i'm tired we're all tired but let's share the different ways we're tired and like the value of the fabric that is a community. You're not just getting like, oh, we are this one thing and we are the important ones. Like, no, it really takes all of us and I know nothing and <laughs> it's all of us together. Yeah, it's the fabric. It's, it, it's incredible. It's a key way in which this differs from the co-op or the internship. I yeah. Think. Uh, the, the fact that we scramble the house yeah. and have students across cohort because I, I think the tendency with those is like, oh, I'm just immediately going to jump into a professional situation for a semester and build those connections and networks. Uh, whereas what we often see with the students is that, you know, this is a great transitional program, mm -hmm. right? So we don't, I mean, there's a lot of like throw you in the deep end of the pool. Sure. Right. It's great. But there's also <laughs> like, here's your swimming. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, here's other people watching. swimming with you. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Get, you know, make a flotilla. I think what Amy, Amy mm -hmm. brought up too is the students come, they immerse themselves, and there's that dynamic with the students interfacing, engaging with the community. But there's also a whole thing, the cohort itself, depending upon who chooses to do this, there might be diversity within the cohort and they bring different disciplines and so there's a whole learning and a lot of students have to get accustomed to living in community mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know because they don't all have their own bedroom here or private isolated place you know they're living in a house together so there's there's all kinds of uh, you know learning that they have to do mm -hmm. and then in terms of placing students that they uh if you're not in design build or not an architect you have to do 20 hours and I'll, I will work to place them at a place that they're interested in. It might fit with their major and it might not. Mm -hmm. And I'm just remembering um, Nathan, who was an anthropologist. He, I placed him at respite care and he's now a doctor. Huh, uh, who would have thought? You know, so some students end up changing their, their majors. And I think of Jill who was in the, a, Farmer Business School. She got placed over at Lower Price Hill, and she helped uh, do a design about how maybe how to model their laundromat or do some things yeah, like some that. Marketing work and now she's yeah. studying to be a lawyer. I mean, she. Yeah. I mean, you know, so some students have changed their majors, you know, or just by their experience in whatever placement that they uh, they were at. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah. You know, the other the other cool thing that Bonnie and I get is the window on uh, where people have gone. And we hear back from folks, and that's wonderful, especially in this season of the anniversary. We're getting a, a lot of uh, emails, cards, phone calls, etc. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting how people, I was thinking of recently, I had a correspondence with, with Kelsey, who now lives in Brooklyn, New York, and has started out in the design build was doing architecture stuff, we went to a firm in Cincinnati, and then transitioned into education, right? And started working in that, and is now in a master's candidate for um, the, the policy, really, the policy on education. So it's sort of like, we get people going both ways. I think of Jeff, who's now faculty in architecture and interior design, who started out in the first cohort uh, as, a, as a planner, you know, and was going that route, and then went to graduate school for architecture and stuff. So, it's great. It's 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 not a program necessarily that that 
you know, you, you just predefine what your career is going to be and then, oh, this is just going to augment that. Mm -hmm. For some people it does. And I think for you in the room here, it's, you know, convenient that it's <laughs> like, here's what I wanted to do. Here's what I came and did. And here's what I'm doing now, you know, mm -hmm. and they, they, they really link together quite seamlessly in a lot of ways. For other folks, it's like, um, wow, this really flipped my expectations around mm -hmm. in my direction, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I think, um, yeah, as a program, it's really interesting how it how it sends people. Mm -hmm. And I would even just speak to um, like when you're in a space, you get so much than what again what you came thinking you would get. Um, like I had a history working with kids. Like I wasn't a, a traditional teacher, but like I was like, oh, I do kids programming, and like I had just kind of my eyes have been open to a lot of large systems and social justice issues, and so I was like, oh, I really want to learn about this. Um, you know what this looks like, boots on the ground, like in community. Um, and so when I came here, a lot of the conversation around housing, I hadn't really been exposed to. Um, and I feel like when I was um, an intern at Peasley, Peasley was just really starting to get involved heavily into like housing policies, which is not Peasley's uh, traditional kind of vantage point. We mostly do um, kind of enrichment or artistic expression, which I had a lot of experience in, but the housing piece, I was like, um, you know, especially being amongst architect majors, being amongst social workers who were working in um, a housing organization, um, the exposure to like the struggles for housing and access to a home and um, how we commodify land and things like that, um, I had no, my eyes were totally blind to. Um, and so even though I knew I was like, oh, I really want to be in community and all this other things like that specific nuance um, of the effort and of the struggle. Um, really sparked, has sparked my interest and obviously was one of the driving forces that really kept me here. Aside, I love the kids, but um, the housing piece really, I feel like, um, yeah, was the part that like opened my eyes, even being one to stay kind of in this lane for, mm -hmm. yeah, for right now, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd say too that I think with this program being so interdisciplinary, I think like a lot of classes or programs like tout that. And the fact, I think that this is an immersive program just makes it way more effective. I think if we were on campus at Miami taking one of these same classes together, there's like a culture of like, you hang out with the people from your yeah. majors yeah. and your classes all the time. So we take this class together and there'd be like an interdisciplinary aspect, but then we like go yeah. back to our dorms yeah. and hang out with our same friends. And being here together outside of the classroom mm -hmm. and like, yeah. like you said, like in the intern house or like it, where we're living and like, just like how we're hanging out with each other it just like adds that additional layer mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. how we like learn from each other how we're interpreting different things mm -hmm. how we're interpreting the architecture of different buildings that we're either living in or we're visiting and who they're made for and the things mm -hmm. that the architects can point out that i would have never seen but now i have that lens mm -hmm. three years later of how i see the buildings in my neighborhood and like the same with the teachers when we hear about things that are going on with the public school system and the school board elections and like all those things like those are things I would have never understood in the same way that I understand them now mm -hmm. and that's like not only because of the classroom sense of learning about it from that lens but also that just like like you said like hearing from the student teachers that we're living with mm -hmm. and like hearing about their day-to-day -day experiences mm -hmm. and living with them is just like just like that whole other layer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reflect on your cohort where there was uh, the trial down the street, right, for the the killing of Sam DuBose. Mm, yeah. And like we had a student who was a journalism major, right, and and had a placement at Street Vibes mm. and had the credentials to be in the courtroom, mm. right, test. Mm. And then we also had a number of students who were like, we want to be out front, and we are not gonna. <laughs> we're going to make our voices heard, <clears throat> make our voices heard mm -hmm. about um, the injustice we see in this, in this proceeding, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was wow. for me pretty uh, remarkable. And each year there's kind of a different, mm -hmm. again, there's a different character of the makeup of the cohort, mm -hmm. but then there's also different campaigns that the community mm -hmm. brings to us. Like here's things that are going on that we really want mm -hmm. you to help us with, walk alongside us with this issue. Mm -hmm. And then there's also like, Again, the things you can't, you can't plan for, yeah. You can't plan for that. And I remember those were a few days where I was like, oh, wow, you know, like, uh, because they're, you know, prior to 2020's unrest, I mean, they're still here, you know, we've There's, often For the first year, 2006, I think we were celebrating I mean, the, the, the 10th anniversary of Buddy Gray's death. Yeah. And there was a student whose 
relatives help pr us produce a CD about Buddy's life or different, you know, films and stuff like that. And then when we celebrate the anniversary, I forget which year it was of the drop-in center, the People's Move, the students helped with that. Um, students helped to save Rosenberg School. They, when they were in the swing space up at Washington, um, the school up on Vine, they painted the playground. So what we always bring in whatever is happening in the community at the time. The students assist us mm -hmm. if it's trying to save Washington Park. I mean, students did a design to, to prove that you could still have the pool and the basketball court there and still make improvements. So, so that's part of the benefit. I think the community, when we uh, wanted to do this with Miami, that we had to see the benefit. So the only way is that they're going to, whatever is happening in the community, <laughs> gonna plug into that. Go to plug yeah. into that. And, yeah. and, and that's where growth happens, I think, yeah. for the students, because they're seeing in real time mm -hmm. what we're faced with on a on a regular basis and obviously the housing because of the gentrification occurring in our community uh, and people being displaced housing is a key issue so anybody that comes through this program is going to learn um, yeah. about housing and how important that is to have community control of housing and and, and what our current battle is right now of mm -hmm. people trying to still be here you know, and benefit from all the investment that's, that's going in uh, to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to ask if you all would want to share if what was your biggest challenge mm -hmm. in your in your year of the residency program? What was most challenging? Mm -hmm. Or maybe it wasn't. <laughs> Honestly, I think for me, the the most challenging thing would have been to leave. <laughs> I was, it was a, it was a hugely impactful thing to be here. Um, and I couldn't imagine going away and leaving the work that was happening. So for me, the challenge was, how do I stay? How do I figure out a way to keep doing this work? Um, it just so happened that I could plug into over the run community housing and I could find a place to live and I could stay here. Um, because I think this work really wrecks you in a good way you know it like totally upends a lot of things at least for me it did and um i couldn't imagine walking away from it from the struggle that was the challenge for me yeah i think one thing for me i think the writing circle circle was such a blessing and also a challenge for me that's just like something that i haven't really done before and it brings out so much vulnerability and I'm so grateful for those moments that we had. But for the first few weeks, I like really struggled with like what to write about and like what to share and like how to share that and having to put it down on paper and then say it out loud. <laughs> it's just so much different than like just processing it internally or just like, you know, when you're hanging out with your friends and you say a few things like off the cuff, but being so intentional about like reflecting on your experiences like I'm so grateful for that but it was really hard mm -hmm. yeah I feel like the biggest challenge for me is similar to Amy like I was not ready to go back to Oxford um I was not like you know um I appreciated the academics that I was getting here in the center specifically the classes we were taking um and how they made it so relevant to everything that I was experiencing. And I was not ready to go back to Oxford to feel like I was just like sitting reading a book again. Like I, I did not want that. Um, and I was like, I felt like I was starting to get my footing as mm -hmm. like a budding activist, I'll say. Um, and so I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I have space for that. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if I have space for that in Oxford. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely feel like that was the hardest challenge, along with Haley's point of the internal reflection. Because like when you really, uh, yeah, um, reflect on your personal experiences, roles that you played in different situations is hard mm -hmm. um, and it's uncomfortable. Yeah. I remember going back to Oxford, like I had to drive back to Oxford for a class during my time in the residency program. I had to go back, I think it was every Thursday and driving in, I felt like I was like switching gears, like such a hardcore, like, and in the beginning it felt comforting to go back. Like, oh, my friends are here. Like it's cozy, it's comforting. But as the weeks went on, I was just, I didn't want to go back. I wanted to be here. 
it felt real and going back felt like entering a bubble again that I had already popped and so it was uncomfortable and um, it felt stiff and it, I, I saw, you know, contradictions everywhere and like these people have no idea what's going on. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, the contrast. It's just a learning like you like, oh man. Not I think one of the things that I get a, a joy out of, I guess, knowing that um, our efforts here in the neighborhood seed activists, you know, <laughs> right. uh, and then not only maybe here in the community, but mm -hmm. they're going elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Because if there's going to be change in the world, this work has to spread. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why I feel so committed to this program, knowing that students will be spreading out mm -hmm. over the world, you know, because some have gone to different countries too, mm -hmm. the okay. students, you know, besides this broadly the United States, but that they get a taste of knowing that we need everyone's energy mm -hmm. to try to make a difference and a change in the world. And, and hopefully they're seeing it through a different lens other than their own mm -hmm. perspective, you know. Yeah, so. there's that, that whole thing of like, oh, I can't unsee that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I think that's you know. like, yeah. Once you know, you you know, mm -hmm. you can't you can't unknow. Mm -hmm. You can't can't go back from. And some of those things again seem anecdotal or like, oh, this is just what happened on the stoop. But I think um, you know what the students have gotten in their 15 weeks is like I, I often say that's taken me at least 15 years and maybe more. But it is it's a progressive thing where you know yeah you, you can't go back to maybe the way you were before. Mm -hmm. And and I think that transition is an important one, especially with the students in the place they are at the time, I think there's something that's very, uh, they're in the right moment. And, and they're, you talk about vulnerability and, and some of that is like within the cohort, but it's also, they get a pass in a number of ways. Like the students who come to this program, I feel like the neighborhood is, they're always asking during the summer, when, when are the students coming back? And, you know, the people in the parking lot are like, hey John, when, when's the new cohort, mm -hmm. you know? and and that to me is exciting and you know a boost and then when people get down here uh, especially from the the hard work that the early cohorts did and the great example they set you know as a shout out to Abe, um the the idea of um yeah when you enter in here as a student you're able to to have the privilege frankly mm -hmm. of of going between these you can go into a civic meeting mm -hmm. you know a community meeting or even go to city hall and you're like oh, i'm a student i'm learning these things mm -hmm. you can go in the courtroom right mm -hmm. you can go into these hallowed spaces within the community too mm -hmm. because you're welcomed in warmly mm -hmm. you know by those who have the lived experience mm -hmm. and will embrace you so um, yeah i don't know if you want to speak to that a little yeah bit, but I, there's an interesting there is free pass that you get there is i'm so glad you brought it's that up free, because actually. i think it's such a special time you will never move to a new place and get that pass again You'll never get that welcoming from people like Bonnie and Miss Dorothy and Miss Burnside. Like, let me tell you all the stories. Welcome. Let me tell you all the stories. Let me tell you all the struggles. Let me welcome you alongside me. Come to this meeting, eat this food. Like, let me hear me, my kids. Like, you don't get that when you move somewhere else. You don't, you don't get. and want to get that and over the Rhine and then if I go somewhere else what, what does that mean but you've learned all of those threads so you can take that wherever it's, it's all true somewhere else you know when I'm when I'm going when I'm driving through different parts of you know another city I think so what happened here this looks like a familiar story like I know this story from my time in over the Rhine from my from my life in over the Rhine you it's all um, you can extract Relate it to other cities. It's um, life happening in similar ways all across the country and the world. Uh, but I think it's so special because you are really embraced when you're here. You're fully welcomed in. Um, people know you're this sponge. You're here to learn. So people pour into you. Um, the community is super generous with with their time and their stories and their love. And you're not going to get that anywhere else. But you're going to then have this kind of roadmap of how to understand space and people and systems and the way decisions get made that you can then apply 
literally anywhere, your hometown, you can take it back and start unpacking. Oh, how did that decision get made? Why does this place look like this? How does this, here's a development. What's the story behind that? Like what kind of community meetings happened or didn't happen? You know, you can just apply it literally anywhere. Um, and it's such a special way to learn and to get these life skills that you didn't know you needed. You didn't know you were missing. You just thought, oh, things happen and it just happens. It's so benign. No, it's, okay. it's not like there's a million things behind that. And let me tell you how that happens here. And that's just, you don't get that anywhere else. Yeah, I think the transferability is important. Yeah. Because, you know, someone bringing you guys in is like, oh, yeah, you're right here, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you're doing these things. But there's also the thought of, like, it goes elsewhere. So, it sure does. And we've given a few examples of that. Um, one thought is we do have a, a video. We, we ask our alumni to solicit, you know, to send in video of where they are now, what they're doing. And we've gotten a number of those prompts back, which are pretty great. And hopefully we'll get more if you're out there. So we, we want to build a document of like where the 250 plus people who have done this program mm -hmm. wound up because not all of them are here and over the Rhine, mm -hmm. unfortunately for me. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we did get one in from Beth Lavelle, who's now an architect in practice in Portland. And uh, if we can cue that up, we'll have that on in a moment here for you. Okay, I think we're recording. Hello, I'm Beth Lavelle. I'm a 2008 alumni of the Miami University uh, residency program in Over the Rhine. Um, I was in the design build studio at that time. Um, and I'm also, uh, I was part of the first cohort of the Atelier program that started uh, in early 2010. Um, when I think back on my time in Over the Rhine and, and what I learned, um two two significant things come to mind um first it was a very difficult time uh graduating in 2009 um as a young uh, aspiring architect it was a very difficult time to enter the industry um and i remember clearly uh going to job interviews um talking about my work in over the Rhine, talking about what we learned, what we studied, what we built in the design build studio, um, and and what we worked on in the atelier program, um, looking supporting um, documentation for tax credits for OTRCH. Um, all of those things really helped, uh, benefited me directly in the downturn of 2008 and the, and the following years in the architecture industry. Um, it was a tough time to come out of school, but um, those those experiences in the programs through the Center, uh, Center for Community Engagement really helped me get a job right after school and jump started my career um, in a pretty significant way. Um, the other thing that comes to mind when I think back on my time in Over the Rhine is just the profound difference that uh, the residency program made in the way that I think about the world, in the way that I am able to, to kind of see and analyze what's happening around me. Um, I grew up in a small town. Uh, Miami is a pretty small place. Um, it was all uh, my experiences up to that point um, of, of joining the residency program had been all pretty similar and, and pretty um, sterile, maybe for lack of a better word. Um, so uh, living in over the Rhine and um, experiencing firsthand the, the, the very same things we were reading about and learning about in class um seeing them play out in real life um experiencing the impacts of urban policy experiencing the direct results of um of racism and and class playing out in the neighborhood um seeing issues of housing and poverty um that we were reading about and learning about and, and walking out the classroom door and seeing it was incredibly profound to me at the time. Um, and, and still shapes the way that I think about architecture 
uh, the way I think about um, the built environment, the way I think about the responsibilities of, uh, of my job um, as an architect, um, making places for people. Um, so all of these things really, really helped shape the, who I am today in, in a very deep way. Um, I think I would be a very different person today if I hadn't had the experiences that I had in the residency program um, in my time in Over the Rhine. Um, but I also learned a lot about the power of community, and that's definitely something that I've taken with me um, in these 14 years since living in Over the Rhine, um, is listening to people and listening to their stories, listening to what they need is much more powerful than what um, what I, I might come to the table with as a design professional. Um, and, and approaching the way we design and solve problems in the built environment from the perspective of the people who um, live and work and raise their families in the places that we build. Um, currently, I'm uh, living and working in Portland, Oregon. Um, I am uh, a sustainability expert and architect in our firm working on um, lots of different project types, including affordable housing um, in, in Portland and the Bay Area and California. Um, and I'm also uh, one of the champions of a significant effort being made in our firm right now to address equity, um, the, the equity of the, the work that we do and making sure that we're approaching our design problems with um, equitable outcomes uh, as a goal from the very beginning and that we're listening to the people who will be affected by our work the most. Um, and I'm, I'm very proud of, of that work. And I think um, the residency program gave me the foundational framework to be able to um, influence my firm um, and the work that we do in an equitable and sustainable way. So thank you. I'm super excited for the 20th birthday party, uh, 20th anniversary. I wish I could be there in person. Um, it's an incredible milestone. Congratulations. And I wish you all the best for the next 20 years. Thanks. Thanks to Beth and the other contributors who have sent in videos. And if you haven't yet, again, it's not too late. You received an email up here at alumni. Mm -hmm. And so check your check your inbox. Um, yeah, with that, we also can take questions. So if you have any questions about the program, perhaps you're considering doing the program in the future, you're an alumni with an important anecdote that you'd like to put in, mm -hmm. um, be sure to, to send that in on the webinar. There's a way to do that. And uh, they'll read them to us and we can respond in real time. So we're glad to have you on board and uh, reflecting with us mm -hmm. about the residency program. Um, one thing we were talking about that we really wanted to bring up in the meantime is that there are, there are you guys who stayed, right? Mm -hmm. So you stayed in the neighborhood and work. But we also have people who come out of the cohort and then shepherd future cohorts. Yeah, so, so in, in this program, students live in two different places in our neighborhood. And then there's a student that we call the residency uh, program coordinator, and they live in the house and kind of just are there just to support the students. So I just want to call out some of those people that mm -hmm. have done that because they get a longer experience too, because they're yeah. either working in the neighborhood or, or doing something in, a, in addition, but broadening their experience while they're here. So Annalise Newmeyer, who was uh, in the cohort in 2006, and then Chris DeLuca, Lori Jennings, Maylee Price, Kenzie Harmon, and Katie Abney. So we just want to say mm -hmm. thank you for for helping us. You know, you've been a big part of the program. Mm -hmm. And then also, there are students that stayed in the area, not over the Rhine, but broader Cincinnati, mm -hmm. that are teaching in in the public schools here in Cincinnati that have uh, stayed in touch and in uh, other people doing, you know, doing work in the community. So we really appreciate all of that. 
and people have stayed in touch. You know, uh, every year I can say the alumni, we invite them back during orientation, and that tells me that it meant something to them. Mm -hmm. And lots of different years get represented mm -hmm. on those nights that we have uh, the alum back because they're the best ones that kind of welcome the new cohort and share with them, you know, their experience or give them tips, you know, about, yeah, how to approach their semester and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a good program. So if there's anybody out there that's still at Miami and is thinking about what to do and you want to join us, we as a neighborhood uh, welcome, welcome you. So apply if, if you can. Yeah, it's not too late this year. Um, we're still uh, got some seats for this fall's cohort 2022. Mm -hmm. um, so by all means, send me an email at blakeja if you're out there. Miami, Ohio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Feels like PBS. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fun drive. The fun drive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Speaking of fun drive, also notice on your webinar that there are donate buttons, oh. which are not required. Your thoughts about impact when you, yeah. when you think about where people have gone and what they've done. I, it, it's become the saying around here, as Bonnie puts it, that you know you're all seeds, mm -hmm. right? And so we don't with seeds. Sometimes you're like, I'm going to plant this seed. The seed is going here. <laughs> but more often, I think it's it's more the uh, more like the pollen thing, right? To to keep it in the season here. Just the idea of like we don't know exactly where right. things are going to go or what's going to mm -hmm. where it's going to land. Right, but but we do know that that the, the footing's there in the way to to uh, to move forward within your discipline, but also with the perspective you get. Any thoughts come up as far as like where you had people land or where your cohorts go? Yeah, I was thinking of a specific anecdote. Um, I was a couple years ago recruited by another alumni of the Miami Residency Program to serve on a committee that was re reviewing grants in the city and grants that were supposed to go towards um, like community projects that would address issues of like blight and community safety. And so I got to be on this committee for like a year and a half or so reviewing grants with like a panel of other um, folks from, from the city government, stuff like that. And this person like recruited me knowing that I've been in this program and would have the insights in this program to really kind of provide a critical eye. And it was so fascinating to like read proposals of what these different organizations saw to be like issues and like their ideas of how to fix them um, through like applying for this funding and then to be on this panel of other folks and to hear their impact and also like provide my insights into like, what is this actually addressing? Like what's written here is they're gonna solve A and B by doing like X and Y. And is that really getting at the root cause of whatever the problem is mm -hmm. and who's being included on these projects and like what's gonna be like the long-term impacts of that and like whose voices were included and like when they decided to come up with this solution. And so I was grateful to have that experience and definitely would never have been able to like provide that insight mm -hmm. or felt remotely qualified to do that without have had this experience mm -hmm. um, of being here, learning some of those very useful skills, mm -hmm. especially like the urban planning architect side of things. Obviously, that was my major coming into this program, but to, to have some of that led mm -hmm. to provide, um, even though that's not my degree, but to have that background, I'm grateful to have that. And yeah, yeah it was very You useful. can dabble it and feel a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> like I know a little bit what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah well, certainly very a lot, right? Like, yes. I don't know the answer. And this is my, you know, uh, professor thing is like, I don't know, but I'm good at finding. We'll people. figure it out. Yeah, we'll yeah. figure it out, or yeah. we'll find where that answer lies, yeah. or we'll get closer to the right. Yeah, yeah. And that's really sometimes enough. It's like mm -hmm. I, that that engages you, right? Like mm -hmm. that gets you over the hump into not like this is something insurmountable, or I know nothing about this. It's kind of like I, I recognize some things here that are familiar, and then mm -hmm. you can transition into a real answer, mm -hmm. right? And I feel like that's what makes those like um, unexpected education pieces mm -hmm. that you get in this program, like so transferable to different places. Yeah. Um, similar to the 
kind of analogy of like seeds and pollen, Ms. Dorothy Darden, one of our community mentors, tells this analogy of being embers. So like embers from a fire that I feel like she left us with um, kind of at the end of our program. And I feel like she usually imparts on each cohort um, that basically you come to Over the Rhine, you kind of get that fire really lit in you as far as like all these injustices, all these things that are happening on a very small scale for a short amount of time, honestly, mm -hmm. like thinking of one semester experience. Um, but when you think about embers from a fire, they drift with the wind, they can travel thousands of miles and no matter, they can still land thousands of miles away and still start another fire. Mm -hmm. um, and so she just always leaves us with like, go light it up wherever you land, whether you're over the ride, whether you're thousands of miles away. She was like, take what you have, that critical eye, those critical pieces that you've learned here, those experiences that people have imparted on you. Um, carry that with you and then join whatever, where, whatever fight is going on wherever you land. Um, and I feel like all alumni, really do that. And I feel like that's why they reach back out to Bonnie and other people in the neighborhood just to speak to the impact that they've had on them. Um, and yeah, and the great things that they're doing. So mm -hmm. I, I carry that personally. I always love to share that and lift that up mm -hmm. whenever I have the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Ms. Dorothy. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. great. Yeah. Okay, so we have two that came in, and our, our friend Ryan, um, who uh, was a big fan of the human experience from the fall of 2009, that is Ryan Wellinghoff. So Great. hi, Ryan, Ryan, thank you for watching. Uh, I think Ryan's today. Thanks for joining awesome. us. Awesome. And then our other uh, question was anonymously submitted, um, but this person would like to know, is there any way for someone who is not a college student mm. to do a residency or to have a similar um experience are there volunteer opportunities wow, are yeah. there um, other ways to get involved mm -hmm. yeah so if you're not a college student how you get involved right i think there's a little precedent for this with um, some of the work that tom did around the fetzer grant which is through peasley and um also with the, the urban cohort um, so the idea is like and we we've, we've talked about this like so immersion is great for 15 weeks for students but we're also finding that doing immersive programming on a, a long weekend type thing. You know, we did it with the Mars Corporation for a while, and this has been five years ago or more. Um, but that idea of like, yeah, I think there are opportunities through the center as a hub to have um, to have these experiences, to get these voices, because I know that with that, um, what we did with the Mars Corporation was very much about having the community members in and really talking around, you know, what it looks like from from this very specific focus if this person is uh local i mean if you contact anyone, yeah, yeah. anyone <laughs> right. there's all kinds of places in the community that offer that have a need for volunteers or something like that there may be a way that we could talk to you and connect you with something we also have in one of the other sessions that will air tomorrow at noon uh, our storefronts community arts uh, group and we the intent of that one, just quickly, and I said we wouldn't talk about other things. <laughs> um, storefronts was really the idea of using community-based art as a way to have conversation uh, between the sidewalk and our space here, uh, the easy way of putting it. So we are always looking for people to engage on that. And that will, we actually have an installation that's part of a larger exhibit at the CAC in Cincinnati in, between May and uh, August. And that group is ongoing. We're we're often doing campaigns. So I think I think connecting by email with me would be great. Mm -hmm. um, I can be found at Blake J A at Miami O H dot edu. Um, but certainly, yeah, there's we're always looking for that. I think the idea and some of the great thing about being in the neighborhood is being intergenerational, mm -hmm. which is another I word, right? But but just the idea, like you know, we're hanging out with kids. Kids come into the center. We also have a lot of learning we get are from people who've been in the neighborhood mm -hmm. for a while and they bring their experience of being a parent, being an activist, mm -hmm. of being present for a long time. Street vibes vendors. Street vibes vendors come in and they're, you know, like, uh, that's my, they bring more than the paper, right? Like mm -hmm. I get an idea of what's going on or how things are out there. So like when James comes by, when Ricky comes over, you know, and, and all the vendors we've had. So, so yeah, we, we are in a great position and I, I think I'm, I'm really in awe of all of you and, and grateful for, you know, Bonnie with their long-term mm -hmm. view and also providing us the footing and the invitation really to Tom to, to start this program. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think Tom would have ventured forth without the blessing of the neighborhood, right? 
So thank you, Mom, mm -hmm. for all that. Thank you. And Amen. thank Joelle, Amy, and Haley yeah, thank you. for sharing with our audience, hopefully, and helping us recruit students and yeah, just your experience. You're good friends. I mean, you know, yeah. we, we get to know each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's about the program. It's about building relationships, mm -hmm. engaging with the community. But um, yeah, it's been it's been good. Mm -hmm. We all feel like family. Mm -hmm. so nice yeah. well, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah. And look forward uh, in the schedule to the other program we have. We have one at noon, one at two, at 5 p.m. today, and then throughout the day tomorrow. And you can also join us Saturday morning at the center here at 9 a.m. if you're um, able to. And we're going to be doing some community writing and we'll drink coffee and have something to eat. So with that, thank you so much for joining us for this program about the residency program. Yeah. Thanks to our panelists. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Memory lane. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>